could go in front of the camera. <laughs> uh, did you just call me a masturbator? Yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's M and D here. D. Hi. Uh -huh. um, we've been away for a little bit, um, just simply because our lovely machine um, completely died, um, <laughs> and we've had to have it repaired basically. So. It's been away for what about three weeks? Yeah. Um, just getting sorted out. So um, we have it back now. Uh, we've been surviving on um, pressed coffee, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Coffee Did you want to say quickly um, what was wrong? So um, we had uh, one of the brew was not clicking shut, and. Um, the other one had a slight a bump issue as well. So there was a bit of a bit of a leak underneath in one of the pump casings. So that's a gear pump. Um, uh, as far as I know, these are the only machines which has a. Uh, it's the same gear pump used in cardiac bypass surgeries. How is it? <laughs> yeah. uh, so anyway. Okay, so yeah, so today um, we're, we just came back to kind of say hi to begin with um, to let you know that we will be doing more coffee reviews um, and coffee based kind of YouTube videos in the future. Um, but today um, you're going to have the pleasure of the master baker, yes, the master baker. I'm thinking of something like <laughs> master. <laughs> you heard me right. Um, who will be looking at making pizza from scratch. Um, not just any old pizza, it's the Napoli. Yeah, the simplest. Or um, uh, yeah, uh, Napoli pizza or Neapolitan pizza is uh, uh, not only a classic. Um, it also was the favourite of Queen Margarita. Ah, also called is that Mar Margarita Queen? Yes, ah, yeah. And, um, okay. And uh, it's, it's a classic. You, you never get tired of it. So we'll do that. So uh, <coughs> this is Dee's new passion um, at the moment. Well, it has been, which is kind well, of... Well, it has been for a while, but Dee's kind of perfecting his technique. Oh, I'm not yes. perfecting I, I, mine, no, I'm, but Dee is perfecting his technique uh, with the dough and making the base and everything. That's a big word, so, perfecting. I mean, I, well, just, no, you're working on it. You well, are working, perfecting yeah, it. Yeah. So, um, so that's what we're going to kind of just have a bit of a look at today. Um, so... What was the other thing about the our food channel, our food and drinks and coffee? So we're kind of trying to include more of our passions yeah, into well, our channel. That's right, dear. We're going to be kind of looking at the things that we enjoy. So, you know, you guys might enjoy it as well. You might not, but it's like the pizza thing. We really love pizza. <laughs> it's like one of the whole family's favourite things. Um, especially the homemade rather than the shop bought. The homemade ones are really, really nice. Um, it's just getting your dough right, and it doesn't matter if you experiment with the dough and get it wrong a few times or whatever, because it all adds to you getting it just the way that you like it. So, D and I like, um, I guess we like quite thin, thin yes, crust, thin thin crust right. piece of pizza. Yeah. Um, so why don't you show what, what, what's needed for pizza? Yeah, so um, Dee uses this. These are actually from Italy, aren't they? Oh no, that from one hasn't come yet. That's oh, just right, okay. something I found in the shop. For oh, now. sorry, no. So um, got some ideally, older. you want um, uh, tomatoes grown in Marzano, if you want the author. Marzano? Yeah. Okay. We managed to get so, uh, flour from Italy. So, yeah, yeah, uh, we've got You Italian get them on Amazon. Flour. You get... Um, uh, yeah, authentic Italian yeah. uh, ancient wheat flour um, yeah. and um, and Dee will show that on the video we will show the packet and everything on the, the video basil is just British basil yeah um, that's dough in there yeah um, so do you want to just quickly uh, go or or I can when I explain I can do that yeah so, so basically um, with the tomatoes if you're making the base it's very easy you can either um, 
put it into a dish and mash them. You ideally want whole tomatoes that've got a bit and, of texture. And the other important ingredient. Rather, yeah, rather than um, buying the sieved ones. Don't buy the sieved ones that are already pureed, like the passata. Yeah, too smooth, um, and you want smooth. a little bit of lumpiness yeah. to give it a bit of texture so just and unevenness. Crush it, or get a fork and mash it, or something. It'll, and that's like the whole tin tomato. Or you so. can use a blender. So I can. Uh, or you can use a blender, but then we've just asked for them not to be sieved. A blender will blend it. It will make. No, it just a smooth. pulse, little pulse. Okay, so maybe like Dee said, if you pulse it. Um, another ingredient from the supermarket is mozzarella. Um, obviously, like we said, that supermarket one, we have ordered some Italian yeah. ones, but that's just us being us and <laughs> liking to be authentic with it. Alright, um, so... That basil, um, that's what, about pound fifty or something, pound sixty. Yeah. from uh, the supermarket and you can just keep it alive by watering it. Yeah, you only need a few leaves for a pizza, really. Yeah. So yeah, you don't need. You actually don't need to overpower it. You're no. right. Um, it just needs a little bit of basil because the fresh basil's got a beautiful taste to it. Yeah, and, and it, it kind it, of permeates. The yeah, it kind of compensates for that uh, dough mm. as well. Yeah. Uh, it makes it all feel lighter after you've eaten it. So yeah so what's the process we're going to do do you want to have um, start so do you want to come over to the camera i can just quickly show um, yeah so what are we starting with making a dough and yeah then you're going to i'll make do dough topping and yeah. then uh, just show the raw yeah yeah it's it's very easy well. it's very quick that's a i want to encourage people to yeah. like everybody to try traditional okay so this food. yeah the whole point of our channel now and as always, it's just to be really open and share things with you that we really enjoy and our experiences um, going through making pizzas and things like that and bread and all kinds of things. So um, I'm going to take over from G and the master okay. baker can come in front of the camera. Not come in front, go, go in front of the camera. <laughs> uh, did you just call me a master baker? Yeah. <laughs> Got it? Yeah. So use that instead of turning. You just use that joystick. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, hi. Um, I'm going to empty the tomatoes into a little plate which you're going to use later. So, to flavor the tomatoes is um, quite um, easy. You can either, if you don't have a blender, use something like a potato masher so it gets an uneven, um, you know pressed uh, or squished tomatoes um, or if you have a blender it's just a matter of a very quick pulse so you have that in um, can blend in a leaf or two of uh, basil with it always remember a bit of salt salt always brings the flavors out so you need a bit of salt Don't need pepper, nothing else. You want that? No. Um, no well, you can go crazy with it. You can add oregano. You can add all kinds of stuff with it if you want. But um, even garlic if you want. But um, then it gets a, a much more complicated taste. But okay. uh, um, the simple so, taste is classic. I was going to say you're going for like just the simple yeah. taste. The simple so, taste can often be quite. Um, so, quite um, tasty itself, can't yeah. it? Uh, uh, is everything in the frame? I'm just going to do a quick pulse. Yeah. Um, so. Remember to hold the top down on that. That's it. I did something the other day and forgot to hold the top down. That's it, that's done. So that pulse was just a couple of seconds, that's it. Uh, just a little tip, it's very easy to clean your blender, you just put some water in, blend it on the higher speed for yeah. a couple of seconds. That's done. Clean it for the next time. So, okay, camera seems 
supposed to be pointing elsewhere. I know, I have not seen. <laughs> so I'm going to put this aside. Thank you. Um, Uh, it might be a good idea to open the mozzarella and let it uh, let it dry out a little bit, otherwise it'll be too wet and it will just make the underneath of the flour go soggy. Okay. So all I'm doing is I'm I've emptied it, mm. emptied the water. You can see the mozzarella inside. There it is. I'm just letting it breathe and the excess sense. water to lose out. So I'm going to put that away from here because I'm going to use keep this place dry to stretch the pizza later. So I can go back there. Uh, so for the flour, you can knead by hand. There are loads of videos. Uh, can just knead by hand or if you have a, a mixer it's just a few minutes on the element. Also the advantage with the mixer is I can just put this bowl into the fridge for letting it uh, letting the dough uh, mature for a couple of days in the fridge. Okay. And I have a second bowl. So we'll um, go through it. So I'm just fixing. I think There's one no of the things, sorry, just to butt in, one of the things we found very useful is having two bowls with the mixer, isn't it? Yes. So whatever kind of mixer. So we will be comparing this mixer. We have got a spiral mixer in the back, you know, garage. It's uh, much more just for dough. That's just a dough mixer. It's uh, a huge one, isn't it? Yes, but the dough that it mixes is much tastier because simply because of the way it mixes. This one sort of stretches and breaks the uh, um, the gluten, I find. Whereas the spiral mixer is so gentle, the the bread or pizza that you make with that rises much further. Yeah. So um, the kind of machine you use. Then there is another one which I really like, but it's not suited for a home. Is a it's like a two hands that makes the dough like that. It's, oh wow! It just keeps going like that and mixes it. <laughs> so you'll have two little arms coming out, yeah. and it'll mix the dough like that. So um, I think it's just called the two-arm mixer. I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we'll um, I'll just cut the video, pause the video, get the flour and stuff ready, and the okay. scales ready, and we'll just go to making. Uh, so you need to. Oh, have you stopped it? No, no. Okay. So basically, you you need to. Uh, do something like 56 to 63 percentage uh, water of dough. What that means is you have 63 percent or 60 percent or 57 percent water. Um, so in a kilo, which is 1,000 grams of flour, that's about you know 600 ml of water. One ml is one gram if it's water. Okay. Not so far as liquids. Um, okay, so um, do you want to end the video? Yeah. So, okay, we're back in with this. Okay, so um, I tend to add yeast first. So you need only about a gram or two of yeast, not much. So you probably won't resist on the scale. Okay, and Usually I add the water next, so what I want is about, uh, I'm going to go for a 58, 60 percentage seems a bit too soft last time, so I'm going to go for 58 or 59 percent. What do you mean? I'm going to go for a 59 percent water in one kilo. So that's 590 ml water. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so you're weighing it and doing 590. Yeah. yeah. So. Because for people such as myself, yeah. you will need to explain that. It's going to almost. It's getting a bit out. Okay, yeah. 
585 ml, so that's okay. I'm not putting the salt yet. Um, now I tear it so I can measure the um, till that's going. It. Tear means getting it back to zero. Um. Uh, a kilo of now we need the last ingredient salt uh, how much liberal amount I put about that much I don't know how much that is uh, good it came to good about, pinch. that was about 15 or 16 grams so the, the, the salt that we use is um, like a 18 grams. A sea salt isn't it it's, yeah. it's not it's not refined table yeah. salt or anything like that. We, we buy a... Can you show the packet? You've got that solder there. Oh. That's just one that we get. And uh, um, it's one. You might want to hold that there a bit longer. I don't know if people saw it. Oh. People might really want to know what That's just use. unrefined sea salt with all the muck from the seashore. <laughs> so it's got, it's got all the minerals and stuff in it. Yeah, it's not from Western Seafront, is it? No, <laughs> that would be just British mud. <laughs> <laughs> that would be mud. It is French. <laughs> I'm sure they would be repulsed at mud, so they, it wouldn't be included in their salt. <laughs> okay, that's uh, you don't need the wings scale anymore. That's all so finished with. I used to just do it in my previous video. I've always said just feel the flour and just chuck in what you want. It, I do find for developing your skills, if you have quantitative data, you can slowly so you, I So if you have an idea of quantity at the beginning when you're starting out and then as you go through an experiment and it goes right and wrong, yes, yes. you'll get a feel for how much yeast you need, you'll get a feel for how much flour you want, how much water. Yeah. Um, you know, if you want to add oil, yeah. some Do people add good? oil yeah. to it. Do you look good? Yeah, no. <laughs> you look all right. <laughs> that about? I can't speak it. Uh, so, basically, if you just want to enjoy just cooking or making pizza, don't worry too much about measurements. Uh, just do it. Just get it wrong if you want. Just, just do it. Uh, that's all I'm, uh, you know, kind of emphasizing. Just the action is always more important than thinking about it. So anyway, so, but if you want to keep improving on what you did last time and what you want to do next time, then it kind of helps to remember ratios. So, 58% to 60% hydration seems to mostly always work. If the dough feels too tight, increase the hydration by a little bit more. I wouldn't go beyond 65%. It's too runny. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when it's finished kneading, uh, you don't need to knead it for long, just about five minutes of kneading. Uh, the flour is Kakuto brand from Italy. So you get this. This has been in the fridge um, for a couple of days. The fridge is around to four degrees centigrade so it's matured nicely it's got a bit of spirit in there that's why it's got that slight greenish tint so all i'm going to do is empty it on, on the well floured clean surface yeah leave a bit so leave a bit for the next batch so I'm going to mix this into that so you keep that flavors and the yeast that you have your own 
uh, mix of bacteria and yeast that you have in it sort of is retained into the next batch and over time you get your own specialist taste and each of you will have your own sort of uniqueness to your dough. Um, that mostly comes from the yeast that lives on you as well as in the air, in the area you live and all of it contribute to the taste. And, and the wheat you use, there is yeast already there in the wheat when you buy the flour. So anyway, so, so you've got the basic dough. So you can see the consistency. It's very cold, it's come out of the fridge. So you can see it's starting to loosen up. As it comes to room temperature, that should be about right. I have a feeling 58% is a bit tight in terms of that dough, but we'll see. Um, I'll give you a feedback on it next time. So all I'm doing now is I'm going to get myself a knife. Where is the... Or, um, or something to divide the dough with. So actually... Let's just escape. So ideally a pizza a normal size pizza is around 230 grams. That should be about right. Okay. You can go up to 240 grams um, if you want to, but uh, that should be about okay because our, um, you know, the thing we used to introduce it into the oven is not very wide, so I'm not going to make very big pizzas. I'm yeah. not very good at stretching. So, I need to smile more on the camera. <laughs> so, Just I'm going to continue this um, yeah. with all the, but I'll show you what happens next so we don't have to um, film the whole thing. So, basically, you have, you have this, you're portioned it. Okay, so, um, I knew we should have put a mirror in the... What's that? I knew we should have put a mirror in the kitchen. What? Well, so I can... <laughs> For you. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, well, I just happened to ask if I look all right on camera. So, basically, um, we portion them, as um, I was saying, and uh, you get them ready for the pizza, which is you... The reason you portion them is you make them into little balls of dough which can then sit and rise ready for you to stretch when you when it's ready to so uh, for the novice what's the importance of letting that rise what is it why do you fold it and why do you let it rise well imagine gluten is like um, some sort of strands strings so what you're doing is you're trying to stretch those strings into a into a, in a way where it, it makes it stronger um, otherwise they tend to curl up they t they are slightly elastic and sort of like rubber bands they'll just shrink and curl up uh, in within themselves so instead of the bread rising you'll just get a maybe a soft but a lumpy bread which doesn't have much tear and texture mm -hmm. to it so what you're trying to do is you're trying to stretch the dough so you don't want too much flour just in a flour that doesn't stick you're trying to stretch it and fold. Do you want to show the folding action? Yeah. So no, that's fold, 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 fold. So you can see it's tightening <laughs> as I keep folding. Yeah. The other side gets smoother. So yeah, that does maybe, look quite smooth. Yeah. So uh, what I've done is I've, I've just crimped there so it's tight and uh, see. You, you crimp it yeah. so it stays that way. So that's that's one for one pizza done. So just make sure the underside because it'll expand and stick, which is fine if it does. Just um, okay. um, so um, yeah. yeah, that's it. So I'll do that. I'll portion that, divide it, and let it rise. So to let it rise, you just get a clean damp towel. Okay. Um, so just make sure it's damp, and you just have your towel over that um, for it to rise okay. and then we'll come back 
and finish off the bits I don't Okay. Yeah? Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, okay. Dave. Thanks. I'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get back and finish it in a second. So let me do all the rules and let it rise for maybe half an hour to an hour. There's no okay. uh, big uh, thing to it. It just okay. depends on the ambient temperature. Right, see all you right. in a moment. All right. Yes. So we're back with Hi, the um, Master Baker. <laughs> so He's got his balls out, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah, Thank uh, you very much. They're all out, so um, they've risen sort of doubled in size. I'm going to preheat the oven now. Um, push the um, air to the sides. And already you've started getting the shape. Uh, yeah. um, unfortunately I can't do a bigger pizza because I don't have the right peel at the minute. So we're gonna What's the peel? This is a peel, the bit you introduce the pizza into the oven. So, okay, so got your tomato there. Shall we wait for the oven to heat up a little bit more? Just give it a minute. Yeah. So, do you want to? Okay, so. You don't need much on there, do you, to make it really good? No, you don't. Um, you just use good ingredients and you leave it for the taste to develop on its own. Most of the taste is in the dough. I would say about 70% of the taste of the pizza is in the dough. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, Okay, let's see. 50% in the dough. Yeah. Maybe 10 to 20% of the topping. Uh, I would say 10% actually is in the topping. Uh, the 40%, the remaining 40% is still in the oven, okay. which is mostly overlooked. So uh, this, even this oven, which goes up to 300 degrees centigrade, uh, how much is that in Fahrenheit? I don't know. I'll, I'll say that in the video, but that's not enough for pizza. You need uh, something like 480 degrees centigrade. Yeah, you do, don't you? I know from the research you've been doing and looking at the yeah. actual pizza so oven. You just lift it slightly and you just uh. So, I've slid the pizza in. I've just used a copper bottom flat tray. Okay. It's got a thick copper bottom stainless steel tray for the pizza stone. If you have an actual clay stone, 
basically the, the clay stone pyramids are bottom from burning in extremely hot pizza. So in a home oven, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it, it does make a difference. So why that? I've got another stone. Reflection up there. I'm trying to look for that. Yes, um, I'll fix the oven light at some point. I've just yeah. ordered it from Amazon. Uh, right. So, so with this dough as well, you can also make like garlic bread, can't you? Bread? Yeah, or naan bread. So basically, naan bread is the same thing, spread a bit more casually. You've got a good technique going on there with the stretch. Yeah, so basically you just flop it onto your hand and back. To your hand and back. And it just stretches naturally. See, it's bigger. I'm trying to... Because I've seen it where they throw it up in the air, twirl it, do all kinds of stuff. Oh, too. yeah. But that seems a lot simpler in technique. You might want a, a smoother a tomato. It's up to you. But I like a little bit of texture on the tomatoes. Um, but remember, if it gets, if the topping is too much, then you'll struggle to get it onto the peel. I think also, um, when it's too wet, it tends to be detrimental to the dough. Oh, and uh, yes, true. Um, another note on uh, um, Italians and uh, the obsession with olive oil. Mm -hmm. um, olive oil is a tasty oil if it is fresh. If where you live you get real olive oil, yeah, then, makes a difference. oh yeah, absolutely. I've had some freshly harvested olive oil and it doesn't compare to what we do, uh, I mean what you buy from a shop. So unless you've got access to olive oil like that, mm. um, so we don't worry too much about the olive oil. The no, no, we don't. The taste comes from everything else. Yeah. Looks a bit heavy, but let's see. Ah, uh, it's all in the ribs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the master baker. <laughs> I said baker. <laughs> so we've got the second stone up there. Yeah. So I'm just going to open my the steam. Show me, I could do a little break dance if you want. That's alright. <laughs> so that one's coming nicely there. Yeah. I think the oven probably needs to be a bit hotter. Yeah, the it? oven does need to be a bit hot. The oven needs to be really hot for pizzas. The hotter the oven. So, yeah, the and what you need to do is heat it, preheat it yes. before yeah. doing the pizza because you will be amazed how quickly, isn't it? How yes, that quickly I'm just going to go and fetch. <laughs> doing this for the last few weeks as in really looking at the technique for stretching. Yeah, I was not very good at stretching. Well, no, you seem pretty good now and the dough you've Dee's been practicing dough for years, so it's quite a past master at that. This is, um, um oh, really So, yeah. I one, once found a pirate treasure chest in there. <laughs> Yeah. I hope the kids haven't been playing with us in the garden. I've had that piece of cutter for years. It's kind of sacred. I don't let it be used for any kid related play dough mess. You can see the middle bit bubbling um, and the cheese sort of cooking. That's when you know it's. Um, can I see? Not very well, but I'm trying. What's that flashing light? I haven't got a key. 
Oh, that's just from the host money. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, so I don't know. I would give it another half a minute. I have a feeling the one we put later will also be done. Mm. I don't have to take it out, otherwise it will dry up. I don't want it to cook for too long. Ready? I'd use this because it's got a clearance for my knuckles. Why are they too big? <laughs> Is it caveman knuckles? Oh. Uh, it hasn't got the browning because the oven is so be much hotter. The oven needs to be like so hot it's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, Most domestic ovens don't go to the heat required for pizza anyways. If you have really a pyrolytic nice. um, self-cleaning site in your oven. So you can see the browning actually did start yeah. too, on that side. Okay, I just want to show how you get so the hotter it is, you get the burst of bubbles on the side. So you get a little bit more lightness if it's hotter. So you can see the... Yeah. So you can see the... So basically the... Uh, the dough is like a living thing. It's a, it's a, it is a living thing. It's got stuff in it that's living. And it's a kind of a animal, so to say. And it, it screams as... Uh, very hot on our screaming it's like all those bubbles inside it. Yeah. So it's a good it's like ah oh that's hot. <laughs> Ouch. Like and, and they die so that we may eat them. Eat. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so it's got millions and millions and millions or mm -hmm. should I say billions and billions of living organisms inside that create all these wonderful bubbles. Right. Mm. Well, it's a little bit longer. Mm. It hasn't started getting crispy. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's hot. Mm. The topping's nice though. Mm. Mm. You can taste the bun again. It was this one from Tesco. It's actually good, actually. Good flavor. I can taste the tomato. It's very nice. That tomato is very nice. Mm. Good. Mm. Let's take the next one, Stan. Oh. Now that's come out a bit more. That's what you want. Ah. Uh, so yeah, that browning. Yeah, do you want to show that? The browning on the dough is what you want. Yeah. I don't know why, but that is what you want. So if you look at this one, you will get an even better. You see. Oh. You see the crust. Ah, uh, the air bubbles. Yeah. It's crispy. It's crispy and it's light as well. Uh, yeah. So that hot oven, you see, really really, yeah. is essential, isn't it? Yeah. For getting that reaction. Yeah, it needs to dark. burst. When you put the pizza into the oven, the whole pizza just explodes. And that explosion is what you mm. see as that uneven burning and all those big space, bubble spaces inside. So yeah, so this pizza will uh, taste a bit more uh, closer to, it's a far cry from uh, going to Italy and eating it, but mm. we're using the same flour. Yeah, it's nice. If you want, uh, you know, you can dip it in some fresh olive oil if you want, or just drizzle it as it comes out of the mm. oven. Mm. Mm. Just a note, I don't believe in adding olive oil. Some experts in Italy don't believe you need to add olive oil into the dough, dough because um, it will, it'll actually, when you cook the dough, 
you'll get it too crispy. So some oh. um, Italians add the olive oil, fresh olive oil, when it just comes out of the oven. Mm. So you get that really fresh smell of it. So that's our um, pizza video. Oh, and another thing you can uh, add at the serving table is just sprinkle a bit more. Oh, what parmesan? Yeah, yeah. That's always uh, gives it a nice uh, little touch. Mm -mm. So two things. If you got hold of fresh olive oil, and if you have to grate it, the best way is cut in the big, big, get a big slab of it. Yeah. Pulse it in a blender for a few seconds. Yeah. To get the powder. Thank you for watching. And uh, sorry, I encourage everyone to try it out. Mm. So, yummy, yummy pizza. Um, that was really good, Dee. Thanks for doing that. Oh, you're video. welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm going to apologise in advance for my really poor. Oh, I thought you were apologising for. No. Viewers having seen my face? No. No. <laughs> no. They'll forget. They'll forget. Um, <laughs> They'll get over. <laughs> Alright, go on. Um, yeah, so thanks for doing that. I'm sorry about my camera work. My camera work was pretty bad in that. Uh, I'm, on, I'm not a camera woman. I'm better off in front of it, gabbling at people. Um, but yeah, the pizza came out really well. <clears throat> um, and I think that kind of these are the kinds of things that we want to share with you the things we enjoy yes we do like quite a lot of italian -y kind of food um we think I they're healthy also, as well and tasty we find well, french cuisine a lot um appealing and we find um yeah. uh, italian i food think appealing. what we want to do what we've always kind of done and tried to do is to make our own food yeah we gr we grind our own flour when we can. Yeah. We bought our own grain, you know. Yeah, we've got a little blender mm. there. So, it's, uh, um, how do I use this camera? Yeah, that's a little stone grinder. You just put the um, grains in there. It comes out round. Mm. It's a simple item. Sorry, I know it's a prop, but I couldn't hold it. <laughs> yeah, that was, <laughs> that was meant to be a camera prop. But. Oh no, it was so nice. <laughs> <laughs> but what we want to do is share yeah. the food that we make with you. Because we're just people at home trying out our own things. Mm. Um, so like, <clears throat> just quickly, it's like really easy to make your own homemade pasta. Yeah. Really easy. Yeah. Um, you just got to have a good rolling pin. Mm. <laughs> Um, and things like that so we're going to try and expand our channel we're still going to stick with coffee we love coffee um, and we're going to be looking into that in quite some detail because when we didn't have the machine we used the um, coffee press and I was so shocked at the difference in taste of the beans also because it was being freshly ground to a particular size yeah. with uh, a grinder so we ground it different sizes particles and we found a uh, huge um, you know uh, exciting differences in yeah. taste and uh, certain but coffee that didn't taste very good in with uh, espresso was actually tasting uh, good yeah. in a in a <coughs> cafeteria and it's surprising how quickly you get used to a pressed coffee mm. you've only had the machine back a few days and um, i'm finding the a proper brewed coffee really hard to drink <laughs> which I never thought I would but I'm finding it just because it's really strong when yeah. press has been a lot more diluted but we'll go into that in more detail in another video um, so yeah any feedback would be great you know we've got uh, the website as well someone's asked about uh, showing more of the roasting in the combi oven um, yeah, so we're uh, going to do a video on actually trying to show you how the combi oven roasts yeah. um, the bean. Um, 
using our guide as well. So hopefully you guys have been able to access that guide yeah. to how to um, fry your own beans in yeah. a combi oven for those of you that have got combi ovens. Yeah. Um, hopefully you find that useful. Um, yeah. So we're going to expand the channel. We're going to look at food and drink mm. um, as well. Because they're the and, things uh, we love. We love food and we love we coffee. We can do a little review on our canned food. Because yeah. uh, that was Emma's idea, so just don't do that. Yeah, we got a Kenworth, it's really useful. So, um, and they're nice machines. Even we started off with, well, I won't go into it too much, but we started off with a really old one and worked our way up. Yeah, it's always been Even the there, really old one work. from the 70s was brilliant. Yeah, Wasn't in it? some, it some ways we don't do anything from... more. Uh, we don't really, that's something um, that we will go into it <clears> when we review the Kenwood. <clears throat> the heating function in it we hardly ever use. The reason is uh, there are a few, and we will mm. go into it, and we can say if it's worth getting the one with heating yeah. function or not. Um, but, but when the coffee machine the room, was yeah, not it that, was yeah, yeah, yeah it we, we managed to coffee. boil water with it. Yeah. Okay, so all right, so that's the end of this video. And uh, we've sorry, got lots more we're going to do. So Emma said I wasn't smiling uh, <laughs> that much on the video. I'm um, not usually grumpy. But sometimes I am. <laughs> no, I'm, I don't know. I, I realize. I think I was um, just not used to being on the other side. Yeah. I didn't realize what you're doing is so tough. <laughs> well, I've got you to take the mickey out. Okay. <laughs> That's right. I'm on news. <laughs> All right. So um, yeah, that's it. Um, so that's encouraging you to cook. Emma and Dee here signing out. Yeah. Thanks guys. Enjoy your pizzas. Cheers. Bye. Bye.